Hey, what's up guys? Hollywood Joe. I'm going to do a part three on this UFC 202 breakdown. Uh, my buddy James had to check out, but uh, I'm going to keep it rolling with the in-depth breakdown of Diaz versus McGregor. Not everybody follows MMA or has followed MMA since maybe the beginning of Diaz's career. Uh, Diaz is 10 years into the UFC. McGregor is only two and a half, three years. So uh, there's a lot of guys that Nate Diaz has fought uh, that makes his record of 20 and 10 not look as as good as his fighting will show. So let's get into a little bit of uh, in-depth breakdown of the two guys. Like I said, you have... You've got Nate Diaz at 20 and 10. You've got Conor McGregor at 19 and, thir and 3. So with Nate Diaz, he broke onto the UFC scene through the Ultimate Fighter. He won the Ultimate Fighter, beat Manny Gamburian in sort of a, I, I guess it would be a lackluster season maybe. Uh, Manny Gamburian is a 135, 145-pounder. He's not a very big guy. Uh, the final was ended by sort of like submission by shoulder injury. Uh, Gambirian hurt himself. So after that, Nate Diaz comes into the UFC and sort of goes on a tear. Uh, I think he racked up five wins in a row. Uh, some good opponents. We can uh, jump over to Nate Diaz's a sure dog. And check that out. So, if you ever want to look at a fighter, what he's done, where he's been, you can pull up SureDog.com. They uh, keep stats on pretty much every fighter on the planet that's been in a sanctioned bout. So, like I was saying, we'll run back all the way back down the list. So, right here, he lost to Hermes Franca in WEC24. Hermes Franca is an amazing uh submission fighter and this is actually Nate Diaz's one submission loss on his record which was to Franca then he was on the ultimate fighter he beat Manny Gamburian and then goes on a on a little bit of a tear here beats a Sun Sal Alvin Robinson he submitted Kurt Pellegrino the famous uh, double finger triangle that Nate Diaz hit was on Kurt Pellegrino uh, and Pellegrino is a legit black belt. He is a high-level gra high grappler, and Diaz caught him, and caught him in a real nice one, too. Then his next fight with Josh Neer, the dentist. Josh Neer is one of the toughest guys in the UFC that you're going to find. Josh Neer is a monster. There's actually a video of him beating down some guy that challenged him and showed up at his gym to talk a bunch of smack. Uh, Josh Neer went to rearranging his face. It was pretty hilarious. Uh, then he lost a split decision to Guida. I think that that Diaz won this fight, but Guida's antics and his energy uh, probably carried him to that decision. And then Joe Stevenson, another loss on his record. But Joe Stevenson is another one of the most high-level grapplers at this time in the UFC. Um, so a unanimous decision to Joe Stevenson is... Not not the worst loss you could have on your record. Then he beats Melvin Gillard. Every, anybody that's seen Melvin Gillard fight, he's a pretty scary dude. Throws some serious heat. Um, but he submitted Gillard in the second period with a guillotine. Uh, then he lost to Gray Maynard. Uh, Gray Maynard, in his prime UFC 155-pound champion, uh, crazy fights with Frankie Edgar. Uh, and Diaz actually comes back and gets this loss back. Then he drops down, or then he goes on to beat Rory Markham, Marcus Davis, uh, the Irish hand grenade, I think that's what his, his, uh, his name is, and Marcus Davis is another killer, just a monster. Uh, lost to Don Young Kim, who's way too big for Nate Diaz to be fighting. Um, pre just, just way too big. Same thing with Rory McDonald. Rory McDonald pretty much um, ragdolled. Uh, Nate Diaz, but that's at 170 pounds. And Nate Diaz is a large 155er, but he's not a 170 pounder. Then he defeats Takanori Gomi, uh, which Takanori Gomi's been fighting forever since the Pride days. He even fought 
uh, Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz caught him with a go-go plot. It was, it was beautiful. Then he beat the brakes off of Donald Cerrone. He submitted Jim Miller. Jim Miller is a monster. And then he fought uh, Benson Henderson. And I think this was a number one contender fight that he lost. And Benson went on to get his fight for the title. I, I'm pretty sure that's how it went. And then this is Diaz's one KO loss to a guy that was at the top of his game. Probably the best 155er in the UFC at this time. He just never, just things didn't line up. The stars didn't line up. Josh Thompson was a monster. Then he got his get back on Gray Maynard. Fought Rafael Dos Anjos again, just that one step away from uh, getting his title shot, you know. Comes back and just destroys Michael Johnson. Sits there putting his hands up, just teeing off on him, giving him, he hooking him up with the two piece and a biscuit. It was pretty hilarious. And then, why we're all here, the, the beating he put on McGregor in that second round, uh, I think we're all here to see that taunting back and forth and, uh, I know this fight is going to deliver, and I think that Nate Diaz, with this resume, as compared to the resume of Conor McGregor, because Conor McGregor has fought some some guys. I mean, he's fought some good opponents, but they're just not on the level or the size of of the opponents that Nate Diaz has faced. I mean... Uh, Yes, he's got wins over Aldo and McGregor, or Aldo and Mendez, but these are very small guys when you compare them to Nate Diaz. Okay, so for McGregor, he burst on the scene when he beat the brakes off of Mar Marcus Brimage. But right before that, he was the two belt champion for uh, Cage Warriors. Cage Warriors has had all kinds of UFC fighters be their champions. Michael Bisbing, uh, one that comes off the top of my head right now, but I mean, Tons of guys. So he beats the brakes off of Marcus Brimage. But then when he fights a guy that's more of his size, Max Holloway, he goes to a decision. And I think right now, just the way that James is saying, I think Max Holloway could possibly beat Conor McGregor right now with the skill set he has and the uh, momentum that he's been gaining. Uh, he's been looking very good. Diego Brandau told everybody he was going to – Pete McGregor for his country and then proceeded to get just starched in the first round. Poirier tried that that tough guy act, got starched. Dennis Seaver, another guy, he's a he's just not the same size. I mean, if Dennis Seaver was that size, Dennis Seaver, but two or three inches, I think it might have been a bit of a different fight. But second round, TKO, he just folded him up against the fence. Pretty much the same thing he did to Chad Mendez, but Mendez, with his takedown ability, was able to get him down, feed him an elbow or two, split him open. So we can see that on the ground, McGregor, he does well getting back up to his feet, but he's not the best at keeping himself from being taken down. I mean, it's not impossible to drag McGregor to the floor. And most of the guys that he's fought here, that, that was not their their strong suit in the first place. Every one of these guys is basically a striker. They're all strikers. Nate Diaz has sick boxing, has unbelievable boxing for an MMA fighter. Um, you guys like Andre Ward say that, that when he spars with Nate Diaz and Nick Diaz, their boxing is right up there with those high-level guys. So on the feet, if Nate Diaz can keep his wits about him, not get um, not get too too beat into with these leg kicks and body kicks that I think McGregor is going to try to in, uh, impart into that stomach. Man, the way he did Mendez was just crazy. This just this knife teep right to the stomach, and that saps your energy. Uh, so I think that's McGregor's best chance of winning this fight is trying to sap energy out of of Nate Diaz before he tries to tee off because Nate Diaz with his training with the triathlons uh, it, it, it's very hard to tire him out you know and I don't see the power from McGregor being capable of one shot two shot knocking out Nate Diaz I mean he caught him with a couple good ones and I think people have conflated the first fight a little bit 
uh, because he was making contact. But to me, a lot of the punches that he did land didn't do too much damage or didn't really uh, bother Nate Diaz. That's kind of his style is to stand there and roll with punches, take a few uh, so he can get close and start working on his uh, combos. I think that's what Nate Diaz does this time. He just kind of to walks him down every time Conor McGregor walks in to throw one of his little side uppercuts or something. Nate Diaz is just going to stand there and throw back. And I hope that Nate Diaz tries to use some of his judo, tries to use some of his uh, grappling takedown techniques, his unorthodox sort of trips and things from the clinch that I just don't think Conor McGregor has caught up to yet. There, there's so many aspects of clinch fighting and grappling that that I don't think Conor McGregor will ever be able to make up enough ground to be safe in a grappling situation with Nate Diaz or with a lot of the other guys in the 155 pound division. He keeps talking about wanting to go up and fight these guys, but fighting somebody like RDA who's just going to kick the shit out of his legs and then take him down and try to pound his face out, that's not the best style matchup for a guy that doesn't have the best grappling background. They say, like, like me and James are saying, he has a, a brown belt, but I mean, come on, That's that, a lot of that is for show to go along with the persona that he's built up. He's the UFC champion. You can't have a, a guy that's out there promoting that he's a white belt when he's the UFC champion, you know. So his instructors are probably giving him a little bit of a nudge. Not that he hasn't come a long way. I mean, uh, he, he has lost by submission in the past, but he showed uh, a some pretty good, I guess, sort of a sweep at the beginning of the grappling exchanges with Diaz, but I see Diaz overwhelming him on the ground very quickly if they make it there. But Diaz doesn't ever seem to be like the kind of guy that just wants to take the fight to the ground. He seems okay with standing there and trading back and forth. I love watching him slap people and then smile and laugh at him like, haha, I got you. That's my kind of fighting, you know? So... I think McGregor has put so much money and so much time and so much work into this fight, and to me it's a losing battle for him. It's a, a skill level and a size that, that he's just not ready to compete with yet. Um, and I think he's going to find that out. If they do go into deeper water into the third, fourth, fifth round, I think that's where Conor McGregor is going to have some serious trouble. Because if they do go deeper into the fight, there will be more grappling. There will be more things that McGregor isn't used to. He can go five rounds standing up because he's used to that. You know, uh, wrestlers can go five, five rounds on the ground because they're used to that. They're used to grinding out five rounds. But if the wrestler has to fight somebody or a grappler has to fight somebody, they can keep them away from them and keep feigning and keep uh, attacking from the feet. It, it takes the strength out of the out of the grappler because it affects their breathing, the 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 feints and uh, the the impacts of body shots and things like that affect your breathing. And when you're not used to that situation, it affects it even more. So I think that Diaz will be able to sort of grind McGregor down a lot more than anybody McGregor's ever had to face and. He, I think he sort of feels that. That's where this outburst yesterday at the press conference comes from. He's trying to grasp for straws, trying to find some way to get that mental warfare back on his side. And it's just not going to work with Diaz. The guy's lived a life where people have talked shit to him from day one, and it doesn't bother him, and it doesn't affect him. I think it more fuels his fire, um, makes him a better fighter when he gets into that mode of being able to talk to somebody and talk shit and uh, be more of himself than the subdued Nate Diaz. So my prediction for this fight is Nate Diaz is going to take a little bit of damage in the first round. Uh, second round, just like the last time, he's going to start getting into his groove, teeing off a little bit. McGregor will have more stamina, so it'll last a little bit longer. But I do think the end result is the same. Nate Diaz is going to two-piece him. McGregor is going to either fall or Diaz will take him down and submit him, just like last time, or possibly pound him out with an elbow. So 
That's my, my prediction for 202. Two days, we'll find out.